A lot of IT departments these days have set themselves up pretty much as service providers to their organizations. And very often there's a need to maintain separation between different departments when it comes to consuming IT resources. And then you have the actual service providers, the MSPs. They'll have their own set of completely unrelated paying customers. Now, common to both these scenarios is the need for secure multi-tenancy. Now what that means is securely partitioning a system for all these customers or departments to share, but doing it in a way that the different customers or tenants are not able to tell that it's a shared set of resources. To every tenant, it looks like they have their own dedicated environment. Sounds clever, doesn't it? Well, it is. Hi, I'm Steve. This time, we're going to look at some features Nutanix Objects has that make it easy to deliver object storage in a multi-tenancy context. Let's check it out. Here we are in Prism Central in the Object Manager, and we can see we've got one object store created, OBJ1. Now, before we get cracking, let me show you a diagram of what we're setting up here. We have a single objects cluster and we're carving it into two logically separate environments. So we'll have an object store belonging to the first .local domain and simultaneously another belonging to the second .local domain. Each presents as an entirely separate namespace and each of these supports a separate tenancy. Users from first.local will only be able to access buckets in their own namespace and same goes for second.local users. But a key point is that both tenancies share not only the same underlying hardware, but also the same object service instance. And that makes this a very resource efficient setup. Alrighty, the first thing we're going to do is define our authentication sources. Now, when we click on add directory, we'll see that we can add an open LDAP source or an active directory. So let's go for active directory, obviously give it the name of the directory and the details. And an account with permission to interrogate the active directory. And there we go. But we're not going to stop there. We're going to add a second Active Directory, an entirely different domain, because we want to do, remember, multi-tenancy. And that means authenticating against entirely separate ADs. Enter the credentials, click Add, and there they are. And we could add more AD sources, but that'll do for now. Okay, and now what we're going to do is add users from each of those directories. And we're going to look up a security group in the first directory, which is S3 users first. And the cool thing is this will let us generate keys for all the users in that group all at once. And we can apply tags if we want, but we're not going to. And then we'll just download the sets of keys we've just generated. And there are the users who have keys. Next, we'll do the same thing for the second domain. So we'll do a lookup of S3 users second security group in that domain. And automatically generate keys for them and download them. We would then distribute those keys to the users. The next thing we'll do is set up the object store so that it can respond to requests targeted at both the different domains. And you can see that obj.first.local is already in there and that's because that's the FQDN that we assigned to the object store when we first deployed it. So we're now going to assign an FQDN from the second domain to the object store. There it is, and of course, we can also apply SSL certificates as well to ensure encrypted communications between client and server. So we just apply the keys and certificates and any change certificates required and save that. Like so. And it takes a minute or so, so I've just sped this up in the interest of time. And the next thing is to set up quotas so that we can stay on top of resource utilization. To be clear, in this version, quotas are soft rather than enforced, but hard quotas are on the horizon. So we'll choose the individuals that we're applying the quota to. And this can be either the total amount of storage they're allowed to consume or the number of buckets they're allowed to create. So two gig and four buckets, not particularly generous. And now we'll create a separate policy for the users of the other domain. And this time it's just gonna be a 10 gig limit. Okay, let's create some buckets and assign them to the different domain users. So a bucket for the first domain users, first of all, enable versioning and create. And now we'll create a bucket for the second domain as well. Okay, now that we've done that, 
we need to assign permissions. So we'll share the first bucket with the users of the first domain. Read and write. And guess what? We're gonna share the second user's bucket with users in the second domain. They only get read permissions. Okay, now we'll jump across to Objects Browser, which is an inbuilt browser-based S3 client that comes with every Nutanix Objects deployment. Now this plays a really critical role in the whole multi-tenancy setup because it allows tenants to self-manage their environments. So right now you can see that we're accessing the object store using the first.local FQDN, and we're going to log on using the credentials of one of the first.local users. Okay, so I'm user from the first.local domain. And you can see this bucket that we created earlier and shared with the first.local users. So let's jump in there and see some of the things you can self-manage as a tenant. You can obviously look at all the objects in the bucket and you have a summary of the properties of the bucket. There's a recycle bin for accessing past versions of an object where the current version has been deleted. And you can create lifecycle rules for an objects in this bucket. And that could be, for example, cloud tiering or expiry of objects when they reach a certain age. Now, as a tenant, you can, of course, easily create buckets, which we shall do now. So let's name it after the user and enable versioning. Now that the bucket's been created, we can upload objects to it. And I've got a few large objects here that I'll go ahead and upload. So fast forwarding this bit. And now let's select an object and take a look at some of the object level operations that are possible in the objects browser. You can of course download the object, copy a sharing link to it, manage object tags, view past versions and delete the object. Okay, now let's check out what tenants can do at the bucket level. As well as updating some of the things we saw earlier such as the lifecycle policies, you can delete the bucket, configure it as a static website and set up cross origin resource sharing. Okay, remember we set up quotas back in PRISM? Well, now I'm going to try and deliberately exceed my quota by creating lots more buckets, and I'll speed this part up. We'll take a look in PRISM a little later on to see how this quota busting behavior has been flagged. And let's pretend that we're a user from the other domain now and access the object store using the second .local FQDN, as you can see there. We log on with our IAM credentials, and we can see that this is indeed a user from the second.local domain. The only bucket they can see is the one that was shared with them earlier. If we dive in, we can see we have all the management options that the first.local user had, except there is no recycle bin, and that's because this bucket, you may remember, did not have versioning enabled. Okay, back in Prism, let's check out consumption against the quotas that we set a little while ago. There are the two users we logged on as, and Sonny, who uploaded those large files, has a good chunk of his two gig quota used up. And with all those buckets created, he has actually exceeded his quota on the allowed quantity of buckets. A more recent addition to objects is the ability to apply tags at the bucket level. And this is really useful when it comes to tracking overall tenant consumption for chargeback purposes. You just edit the bucket properties and apply the tag. So there you have it, an easy to use multi-tenanted object storage service. And guess what? We haven't stopped there. We're building even more features into Objects Browser to provide even more control for tenants. Stay tuned on that front. And lastly, if you do acquire more tenants, no problem because don't forget objects can be scaled very quickly and very easily. Thanks for watching. See you next time. And there's plenty more where that came from. If you'd like to know about new videos as they're released, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Have a good one.